Hello, my name is Matthias and I'm a software engineer at Zenadia. I want to share with you an interesting use case about allowing one set of user credentials, access to NGS, Zenadia's global NETS service offering, and self-hosted non-NGS environments. So, when does this apply to you? You have NGS accounts, you're running your own NET server as part of your application. These NET server use JWT-based authentication. In such a setup, you may find yourself with these problems. Dual management of accounts. You have one set of accounts in NGS and you have a corresponding set of accounts in your local environment. Because you have two sets of accounts, you also have to have two sets of credentials. The set of credentials that gets you into your accounts in NGS and the set of credentials that gets you into your accounts in your local environment. So, when to trust credentials in multiple environments? When you need a single set of credentials to work in both environments, NGS and your own. And you are okay with your account configuration in either environment be identical. Then this video is for you. What I will be showing here going forward is a JWT recap. So it's easier to understand what goes into our configuration. Then I'll quickly demo NGS signup and how to change plans. And finally, I will implement mutually trusted NGS credentials. Let us briefly revisit JWT and how it works so necessary configuration changes make sense. On the right hand side, you see the full process on how a client is authorized with JWT. The whole process works as follows. Identity comes from referencing public end key in JWT. So the operator JWT references the operator end key. Account JWT references the account end key and the user JWT references the user end key. Authorization is granted by signatures from end key referenced in such a way. So the operator end key signs and thereby authorizes the operator JWT. The operator JWT, in a sense, is self-signed. It also signs the account JWT. The account end key signs and therefore authorizes the user JWT. The user end key has no JWT to sign, so the NAT server establishes the client identity via a challenge response mechanism obtaining proof that the client possesses the end key the user JWT is referencing. The NAT server also establishes client permissions. They're stored explicitly in the user JWT, but also implicitly by the account that signed the user JWT. So to verify the chain of trust, the server checks signatures. It downloads the account JWT via account resolver. It verifies if the downloaded JWT was signed by the operator the server is configured with. And it verifies the user JWT was signed by an end key referenced in the account JWT. So how do we now implement mutually trusted NGS credentials? We will be needing configuration such that step 17 is made to work. And how do we do this? We configure our net server with the NGS operator and we configure an account resolver. I will be showing how to do this with the memory resolver as well as the NETS resolver. I will not be showing how to use the actual account resolver that NGS is using in part because we want to be able to change that without breaking anyone. We need a dedicated system account as well, just so we have credentials to access the system account of our, the non-NGS servers, but also needed to enable the NETS resolver. To have NGS credentials to use in this demo, I will first show you how to sign up for NGS accounts and upgrade them. This will install the necessary tooling. So let's just set the path. For testing purposes, I generally set the store directory to be local so I can clean it up easily. The init command initializes the store with the Synadia NGS operator. It also automatically generates an account and a user by the same name. 
I want that name to be my-acc. Then I'll add another account and user to be used as system account for the server I control. Here is what we added so far. I'm also generating credentials in the local directory. And then a quick test to make sure that generated credentials work with NGS. So we're subscribed, so authentication worked. And now for the system account. Using system account credentials, server list is able to connect, but will fail receiving nothing as the only servers involved so far are NGS server that are using a different system account. So it failed without results as expected. I know that the limits of the free accounts are too low, specifically the message size and the number of allowed leaf node connections. But I also know we have free developer plans that allow for leaf node connections and have a decent payload size. To upgrade the accounts, I provide my email address for each of them. And the same for the system account or the to be system account. I will be sent a verification email, which is going to ask me for a credit card. However, the developer tier I selected here is free and the card won't get charged. After I verified my email and entered my credit card information, my plan status will say developer. Developer and developer. And after having pulled the accounts, max leaf node connections and max message payload have usable values. Now that we have NGS accounts and credentials, let's set up a net server of our own and use the memory resolver to grant access to it. NSC has utilities to, to generate the desired configuration. Only thing different to normal usage is that you provide the system account name manually. I'm quickly starting a net server in the background so you can see that connecting directly to it works. On initial connect, you will be seeing warnings about unresolved imports. These are imports NGS adds for services that do not exist on our end. The errors result from the net server not being able to resolve the accounts corresponding to the inserted import. The imports can be removed, but to keep this demo short, we'll just ignore them. So let's start the server. Let's start a subscriber. Here are the unresolved imports. They're harmless. If they can be resolved, there's, they're no op essentially. We are able to subscribe, meaning we connect it. So now let's try the same thing with the system account. And now, unlike before, our server responded. More commonly, however, such a setup would most likely make use of leave nodes. So let's connect our accounts to their NGS counterparts. Stop the server. This is a leaf node configuration that includes the memory resolver we just generated and then connects accounts to their counterpart in NGS. This is how it comes out. So let's start the server with a new configuration. You're getting the import errors immediately because we're looking up our accounts and basically what used to be done with the connect during subscribe now is done during server startup because the server connects to NGS. And to show you that this uh, all works, let's subscribe locally and let's publish to N NGS. And for both, we're using the same creds and the message was also received. And then the same for the system account. 
and connecting to NGS using my system account cre credentials and requesting a server list. And there we go. This demonstrated how to set up the memory resolver so that the NAT server accepts the same credentials as NGS. It also showed how to connect to your system account through NGS. However, if you want to be able to change your accounts more dynamically, the NATS resolver is more appropriate. Let's quickly remove the memory resolver config and shut down the server. The NSC command is pretty much the same command as earlier, except that this time we want a NATS resolver configuration. I'm only regenerating the resolver part. Since the file name does not change, the leave node config file generated earlier will pick it up. Let's start the server. The errors you are seeing relate to the resolver being empty. Thus, we need to do an initial push. Once push succeeded, all errors will cease. That was it. For NGS, the push happens automatically on every change. But to make your changes visible, you need to push to your resolver as well. And so how is this done? We use our system account and we point it at NS, uh, NGS and we say all. That's it. So now that the accounts are pushed, we'll do our same test again. This is subscribe locally and publish to NGS using the same account. And we received the message. And then also, let's try the system account and we should see our server list. The NETS resolver in the server we have already running is configured as type full, meaning it will hold all account JWT and respond to account lookup requests. Depending on your application, this may not be suitable for all leaf nodes. But as long as you have at least one server running with a NETS resolver in full mode, you can sort others in cache mode. In cache mode, the resolver will download only the account JWT that are used locally. It will cache them to support offline access for as long as the resolver's TTL value specifies. Since we already have such a server running, I will quickly show how to set up a NETS resolver in cache mode. NSC has a command for this as well, only difference to earlier is that we specify NETS resolver cache. To avoid directory collisions in this particular command, I'm also changing the local storage directory to JWT2. Then I'm going to append more server configuration to that file. I set the port to, to avoid a conflict with the server already running. And I'm only setting one remote, the remote for the system account that is needed in order to make the NETS resolver work even in cache mode. Now let's start the new server. So now let's try out if this works. Testing the system account. Now you should see two server. So I'm connecting to NGS again using my system account cred credentials. And I'm getting two servers, one, the one we had running before and the one we just started. Let's quickly inspect the JWT2 directory. Only holds one JWT. And now let's subscribe using the account my-acc. That's the account we have not yet used. Because of the unresolved imports, this command will fail at first. It does so because of compounding timeouts to resolve the imports. Executing this again, we are subscribed, which means authentication worked. Let's quickly inspect the JWT storage directory. Now we have two accounts. And finally, let me also show you the offline usage. I'm shutting down both servers. Now I'm only starting the NAT server with the resolver in cache mode. That's the one in cache mode. And subscribe, which works. And so now we're able to connect to our NAT server with the resolver in cache mode that has myacc cached and we can still access it despite the NAT server with the full resolver being offline.
All it takes to trust the same credentials in different environments is to trust the same operator, configure the NETS resolver, set your system account manually. That is it. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. If you have questions, reach out on our Slack. Bye.